Hi, anyone who's there. I'm so sorry about that. I uh, enabled Bixby on my phone and it caused me lots of problems. I'm really quite late. I'm very sorry. I can't see anyone there. Okay, great. One person. <laughs> I'm just going to wrap it on just for a couple of minutes in the hope that some other people will come and join me. I hope I didn't scare too many people off. Hi, two people who are there. Just send me a message. Say who it is. Tell me who you are. Thank you for coming. Um, I'll just quickly say what we're going to be doing today. Uh, today is our yin yang yoga session, now that I've sorted out the technicalities. Um, and we're going to be doing a class on, uh, particularly on the shoulders, um, for those of us who spend a lot of time um, uh, slouched over, hunched over computers, phones, cars, sofas, etc, etc, etc. So quite a lot of us, actually. Hi Helen, hi Sean, sorry. <laughs> I'm late. Bloody Bixby. Okay, so um, Helen and Sean and anybody else who's there, let's get started. So we're, uh, we're going to begin with the yin today. So if you just want to uh, get a comfortable seated position. And as I said, the shoulders, the leg, which I know we've done a lot of recently, but um, I do think it's particularly useful at this moment in time, especially since we do tend to hold quite a lot of stress in these areas as well. So let's start with eagle arms to stretch the back of the shoulders. So raise the arms up, cross the right over the left, bend the elbows and then bring the hands towards each other. They may touch, you may hold on to the wrists, they may not reach. Doesn't matter as long as you're feeling a stretch in the backs of the shoulders. So once you've done that, I want you to just bring the elbows up. Hello, third person who's just joined. I can see you in the corner. And then just relax the shoulders as this is yin. Now, if you've got any kind of, I'll just move to the side so you can see me. If you've got any pinching in the front of the shoulders, you might want to draw the shoulders back a bit. And remember, for more stretch, you can bring the elbows up. And for less, you can bring them down. So you choose which option is best. And then you can stay in for around 10 breaths. Close the eyes. See if you can relax the muscles of the shoulders. And remember that we want a stretch in the back of the shoulders that's not too much or too little and that we can stay in it for a little bit of time passively. Not as long as we would in a normal yin class. but longer than we do with the yang part. Okay, so then just before you drop the shoulders, let's just make this slightly more yang. So just breathe in, and as you breathe in, raise the elbows up a bit more to get a bit more stretch. And then keep them there. And then a little bit more as you breathe in. And then breathe out and drop the elbows. So a bit of muscle use there so that it's more yang. So just for a couple of moments, just notice how the right shoulder feels compared to the left. And then we'll go to the other side. So raise the arms up, cross the left over the right, bend the elbows, bring the hands towards each other, or the wrists, just bringing them towards each other to get that stretch. Again, I'll just change, move to the side so you can see. More stretch, bring the elbows up. Less stretch, bring the elbows down. Pinching in the front of the shoulder, you can try bringing, just bringing the shoulder blades together, taking the shoulders back. If you still want more stretch and bringing the elbows up isn't really working, you can try folding over and moving the elbows to a slightly different place. Close your eyes, keeping it yin, keeping it passive, but feeling that stretch on the back of the shoulders.
keeping the shoulders relaxed. And then just for the last couple of breaths, breathe in, breathe in, bring the shoulders up, bring the elbows up. Keep them there as you breathe out. Breathe in, elbows up. Breathe out, let go, and just drop the arms. Close the eyes for a couple of moments and just notice how the backs of the shoulders feel. And then we're just going to move on to reversing that movement, so opening up the chest. So I want you to bring the hands together towards the back. So you've got a couple of options depending on your shoulder mobility. You can either bring the hands together or you can bring the fists together. I'll show you. So we're bringing them towards the back. So you can either have the hands together. This totally, as I said, depends on your shoulder mobility. So this may not be accessible to you, fine. Other option is to bring the fists together. And another option still is just to have the hands on the back so that we're opening up the chest area and we're feeling a stretch, an opening in the front, in the chest. So you choose which one works best for you. Don't try to automatically go to the hands because you think that's the right, inverted commas, pose to be in. There is, as I always say, there is no right, there is no wrong, it's what suits your body. So you try those different options and you see which one gives you the best opening in the front of the chest without anything hurting you anywhere. And you may very well, you probably will be feeling this on the fronts of the arms here as well. Close your eyes just for a few seconds. Bring your attention to that stretch, to that opening in the front. The front shoulders, the fronts of the arms. And then drop the arms. And let them just rest for a short rebound. And then we're going to take hold behind the back, take hold of the back of the right arm, not the back of the right arm, take hold of the right arm. And then just let the arm either loose by the side or you can put the hand on your uh, knee or, or wherever, it doesn't matter. Now, if for some reason, if your arm can't, if your hand can't reach your right arm, then that's fine. Again, we're just trying to open up the chest a bit here. You can always just put the hand on the back. That's fine. As far as you can go, as is comfortable. And then we're going to drop the head, the right ear to the right shoulder. Close the eyes again. Resolve to stay still for around 10 breaths. And what we've done here by holding on to the right arm is basically we've increased the stretch in the left side of the neck going into the left shoulder. Keep the body relaxed. Notice if you're tensing anything, clenching any muscles. Perhaps move the head slightly forward to get a slightly different stretch. Still on the lateral side of the neck though. And then drop the arms, drop the head down to the front. Notice the difference between the left side and the right side of the neck. And then this time behind your back, take hold of the left arm or just put that right hand on the back if you want to, that's fine as well. And then drop the left ear to the drop to the left shoulder. Shoulders soft, body soft. 
Feeling that stretch on the right side of the neck this time. So just starting this session off with a couple of yin-like poses. Just to stretch out the areas that we're going to be moving into now in a more yang way. So focusing more on the muscles in this next part. In this first part, focusing more on the connective tissue. The deep connective tissue, albeit briefly. Okay, let go, bring the head back into the centre and a short rebound before we move on to the yang part of the session. I hope everybody's okay with us going a bit past the time I said that it would usually finish today because we started a little bit later, even no later than five or ten past maximum. So we're going to start with something called nerve flossing. So bring the arms up and out to the sides with the palms facing up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to bend the right elbow and as we bend the right elbow into the shoulder, we're going to take the left ear to the left shoulder again. And then repeat to the other side. Right ear, right shoulder, bend the left elbow. Close your eyes, pay attention to the movements, trying to keep the arms and the head movement together. And you can also synchronize the breath. And as I said before we started, this is called nerve flossing. So the idea being that you are flossing the nerves of the upper cervical spine, so the neck, the top of the back, through this movement. Noticing this movement. Noticing how it feels. Noticing how the arms might be feeling a little bit heavy now from just keeping them up here. And then we started on the right side, so let's finish on the opposite side and then just bring the arms down again. Before we move into a pose that you're going to recognize as soon as we start doing it, not from yoga, but from something else, I'm sure, if you're of a certain age, perhaps. So let's take the arms out again, but this time what we're going to do um, is we're going to have the right arm, the palm is going to be up, the left arm, the palm is going to be down, okay? So we might want to bring that right arm up a bit and the left arm down a bit as well. So first of all, keep straight, okay? Actually, keep the arms parallel to start with, roughly, roughly. So what we're going to do, we've externally rotated the right arm, we've in a uh, right shoulder, right arm, and then we've internally rotated the left. So we're going to make them opposite. Okay, so basically we're going to turn them the other way around. Okay, so whatever's facing up, faces down, and vice versa. Okay, so just switching the palms over and the movement here is coming from the shoulders. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to start when the palm is facing up, then that, the arm is also slightly up. Just noticing again this movement from the shoulders, this internal and external rotation. And then this is where you're going to start recognizing movement, some of you. So what we're going to do is that palm that's facing up, that arm that is up, I want you just to raise it up a bit more and also move the body more in that direction. Palm is up, 
move the body more that way. Still keeping the movement from the shoulder, but internally and externally rotating these arms. You know what this is, some of you, I know you do. <laughs> yeah, really, the movement's really coming from the shoulder here, okay? And then when you are on the other side, so the left palm is up, bring the arms down again. Notice how the shoulders feel. And then one more we're going to do in this seated position. So I want you to bring the right arm up and then out, like one half of the YMCA. It's all about the, uh, the 80s today, everybody. And then we're going to externally rotate again. So externally rotate, basically, we're bringing the palm round more towards the back. And then just notice lift that shoulder up as well the shoulder the shoulder only then what we're going to do is a cutting movement coming down and then turning the palm at the bottom so again we're going from that external rotation to the internal rotation external rotation and then turning the palm round so it's like a cutting movement so we're using some muscles here in this area that aren't actually utilized very much. It can be quite an energizing movement. I quite like this one. You can do it faster if you want. You can do it more flowing as long as you've got that internal and external rotation, make it more like a figure of eight if you want, as long as we've got the internal and external rotation of the shoulder joint. You do whatever you want. It doesn't need to be the same as me, as long as you've got that movement. Okay. And then bring the arm down. And we'll do the other side. Left arm goes up, half of the YMCA. External rotation, so we're bringing the palm more towards the back. Maybe it will go far, maybe it won't. Raise up that shoulder. Shoulder only, not the whole body. The shoulder, there's a lift. And then again, cutting down, turning the palm round when it comes to the bottom. And then going back again. So this cutting movement, external rotation to internal rotation of the shoulder. With the breath if you can. Our yang movement, using the muscles, moving. One more, two more. And then on the second one, bring the hand down. And just before we move from our seated position, see how the shoulders feel. Maybe you might want to roll the neck, roll the shoulders. Make sure to go both directions. And then make your way onto hands and knees into a cat cow position. And then just in this cat-cow position, just making a few movements, cat-cow movements or cat-cow style movements, but with a particular focus on moving the shoulders. So not really cat-cow at all, actually, just uh, being on hands and knees, but moving the shoulders in whatever way, just organically. And then just coming back to the center. And then I'd like you just to push up into down dog. Go slowly, you can start with bent knees, that's fine. And then slowly straightening the legs. And then you can just pedal the feet. Just 
just to loosen up the legs, loosen up the hips, go into stillness and something to stabilize the shoulder joint here. I want you to kind of pull the hands together. So you're energetically pulling the hands together like they're magnets. Same thing also, I want you to imagine to feel as if you are pulling the hands towards the legs and then just rotate the biceps as well. So we've got strength, we've got stability here in the shoulders. So you're kind of bringing the biceps inwards. Yeah, so we've got stability in the shoulders here. And we're gonna use that movement in the next pose as well. So come down onto your hands and knees. Same thing. So the hands are planted firmly on the floor. Let me just move this. Hands are planted firmly on the floor, but I want you to feel as if they are drawing towards each other. So feel as if those hands are drawing towards each other, but also as if they're drawing towards the legs, they're drawing towards the back. And then just rotate the arms inwards. So this gives us really good stability of the shoulders. So try to remember that movement to keep the shoulders stable. Then what I want you to do is to move into a plank position. Plank position, then drop the knees. So then we're gonna start. So just breathe in. And as you breathe out, bend the elbows and come down a bit. Take one more breath here. And as you breathe out, come up. Breathe in. Breathe out, come down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out, come down a bit. Breathe in. Breathe out, and as you come, breathe out. This time, come down completely. Put the hands on the sides of the mat for a low cobra, fingertips on the floor, push up, okay, as you're breathing in. As you breathe out, drop the left shoulder to the right hand, breathe in, come up to the center, breathe out, right shoulder to left hand, towards left hand, breathe in, come up, and again, breathe out, dip the shoulder, breathe in, up to the center, Breathe out, dip the shoulder. Breathe in, come up to the center. And then breathe out, come down. Breathe in, go to child's pose. And then go up on the fingertips again in child's pose, breathe out. Breathe in, up to hands and knees. Breathe out, bring the right foot between the hands. Now push into the floor and do the same thing with the feet as we were with the hands. So as if you are pushing that knee out to the right side and then feel like you are, you are, your foot is attracted to your knee energetically, okay? And then come up, left hand on left hip, stretch up the right arm. And then I want you to bring the arm backwards. So again, we're externally rotating the shoulder. Keep looking forwards. And then we're moving the palm out so that it's facing out. So we're externally rotating. Hands coming up, turn that elbow, sorry, turn that shoulder. Externally rotate the shoulder so that the palm goes the opposite direction as it goes backwards. Two more, stretching up, big, big, big circle. And one more, stretching up, turning the palm round, coming down, stretch both arms up, stretch the torso up, bring the arms behind the back. Now you can either stretch out the fingers Separate the fingers, look up, 
so that we're stretching the front of the shoulders or you can take hold of the hands if that works for you pulling the hands up keep that move keep that um, power in the leg stretch up hands on either side of the foot and then I want you just to come back into down dog same thing as before that strength in the shoulders hands going towards each other magnetically pulling towards the back rolling the biceps strength stability in the shoulders drop the knees down and then let's go to the other side okay so go up into plank bring the knees down breathe in breathe out get that stability in the hands and the shoulders breathe in breathe out come down a bit Breathe in, breathe out, come up, feel the work in the abs, breathe in, breathe out, come down a bit, breathe in, breathe out, come up, breathe in, breathe out, come down, breathe in as you're here, breathe out, come all the way down. Wide Cobra, push up, fingertips on the floor. Right shoulder to left hand as you breathe out. Come up, breathe in. Dip the opposite shoulder. Breathe in, come to the center. Breathe out, dip the shoulder. Breathe in to the center. Breathe out, dip the shoulder. Breathe in, come up. Breathe out, come down fully. Breathe in, go back to child's pose. Breathe out, go up on the fingertips. Breathe in, stay here. Breathe out, just breathe out. And then breathe in, I want you to come up to hands and knees again. This time, bring the left foot, that power in the leg. And as you come up, hands on hips. Have I done the side already? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. <laughs> right hand on right hip. Stretch up as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, go backwards, turn the palm. Don't turn the body, keep the body forward so that all the movement is coming from the shoulder. Keeping the breath with the movement. Keeping the legs strong. Keeping the movement from the shoulder. Hi Linda, you're late. <laughs> and then stretch up. And then stretch the arms back. Holding the hands if you want to and opening up that chest, looking up. Bringing the hands up if the hands are together. And then hands on either side of the foot. Tucking the right foot under, coming back into down dog. And then down onto hands and knees again. And then we're just gonna move into Shavasana. So you can do it lying down on the floor. You could do it in a seated position. Or alternatively, you could do it in child's pose. So come into whatever is most comfortable for you. As long as you are neutral and you are comfortable. And you might, before you completely relax, whether you're lying or you're sitting, I'd suggest just either rolling or moving the head from side to side. Moving the shoulders a bit. If you're lying down, then you might want to bend the knees and drop the knees to one side for a twist. And if you're sitting, you can do the same. Just twist round to one side. And also, if you're in child's pose, 
Twist the body. Just for a few breaths and then come back to the center. And then the same thing to the other side. And then back to the center again, wherever you are. And close your eyes. Notice your breath starting to go back to normal again. And so for the sake of time today, seeing as we've gone over, I'm just going to leave you here in your own Shavasana, whatever that is, but please, please do stay for at least a couple of minutes, allowing your breath to go back to normal, allowing your body to take in all the effects. And I apologize again for the technical issues. Not great for the first day of moving it to a Monday. Wednesday will be our yin yoga session at 6 p.m. UK time. So move to Wednesday now from Friday and hopefully we will not have any technical issues for that. Thank you so much for joining me today. Old faces, not old, but people who've been before and new as well. I can see somebody there up in the right corner with a little baby. <laughs> Lovely picture. Thank you for joining. Um, if you've got any questions, please do let me know. Sorry for talking while you're in your Shavasana. I'm going to leave you now. So I hope to see you on Wednesday or otherwise next Monday. Thank you.